Most people, though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Mm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV. It's easier to, mm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself mm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and Good. you're stepping into the unknown, Good. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire? If you believe that you're creating your life and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Mm. So if you can, get ready because something weird or unusual, some synchronicity, some coincidence, some mm. opportunity is going to land in your lap and you didn't have to go and get it. Yes, it came to you. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. I'm Ed Milet, and this is the first time in the history of the show we've had a return guest. And the reason that we've had this return guest is because you've requested more of this man and also because selfishly, I want to be around him more. <laughs> this is my dear friend. This is Dr. Joe Dispenza, everybody. Hey, Joe, bro. thank you for being here. So happy to be with you, Ed. It's going to be so great today. As most of you know, Joe is a lecturer. He's an author. He's a neuroscientist. He's um, an expert, I think, on the mind and body connection. He's lectured in 35 different countries plus five different continents, and he's one of the most sought-after speakers in the world. And I really think he's become the expert. I think you bridge science and spirituality better than anybody walking on earth right now. Oh, thank you. And, um, and I know my audience felt that way from the first time that you were with us too. So you're also a ratings grabber, by the way. So that's the other reason we're having you back today. This man, everybody wants to hear more from him. He's hot. And there's a reason for it because there's really nobody like him in the world. So let's dig in. You ready? I'm ready. Guys, it's heavy note-taking day. So we're going to lay some foundational stuff here, and then we're going to get to some stuff towards the middle and the end that is literally going to blow your mind and change your life. And, um, and that's why I've asked Joe back today. So let's talk about some basic stuff today first, lay the foundation. Nothing with you is basic, but what is the power of thought? Because we talk about this all the time, this in personal development today, everyone's talking about, you know, you got to control your thoughts and control mm -hmm. your habits and all these things. And there's a baseline message about that but you're the best in the world at explaining exactly why this is so important. So give us some background there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if we, everything starts with a thought. I mean, mm. everything that you do in your life, you, you have to have a thought before you initiate an action, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, like any great leader in history understands that, uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide, are you gonna be defined by a vision of the future mm -hmm. Or are you going to live by the memories of the past? Mm. So, I'll give you an example. Most people wake up in the morning, and your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a memory bank. So, most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems, and those problems are connected to certain people and things at certain times and places. And the moment they start, start turning on those circuits, those memories are actually causing them to think mm. in the past. Mm. Every single one of those memories has an emotion associated with them, and emotions are the end product of past experiences. So then, the moment they recall the event or they, the, they recall some problem in their life, they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling anxious. Mm. Now, thoughts are the uh, language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So we could say then, mm. Most people's entire state of being when they start their day is in the familiar past. Well, if you live in the familiar past, then it makes sense you're going to create the predictable future. Mm. So what happens for most people is they get stuck in their biology. So think about this. Mm. Your body is your unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you can create by thought alone. Mm. So if you're living by the same emotion every single day and those emotions are influencing your thoughts, and you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, you're thinking in the past. Your lens of the future is going to be colored by the past, so you can't see possibilities. So, most mm. people like to wait for crisis or disease or diagnosis before they wake up yes. enough to see. Well, the challenge is, is that biology tends to be redundant. So, if you keep thinking the same thoughts, and those thoughts be begin to fire certain circuits in your brain, 
the nerve cells that fire together wire together. So yeah. all of a sudden you start getting hardwired. And those are the thoughts that you can think the easiest. Mm. At the same time, those thoughts produce chemicals called emotions. Yeah. And the next thing you know, your body gets accustomed to living by the same emotions. And it could be guilt. It could be unhappiness. It could be pain. But at least it's familiar to you. At least you can predict it. So mm. some people would rather cling to the familiar than take a chance in possibility. So for most people then they say, well, I don't really see how my thoughts have anything to do with my destiny. Well, that's because 95% of those thoughts are subconscious programs, right? So you're not even conscious that you think those thoughts. So mm -hmm. the first step to change is starting to think about what you've been thinking about yes. and change it. And, and then when you begin to observe those thoughts, you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing Just the Just simply by being an observer of your thoughts. Right. So, so, the, so most people, though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Hmm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV. It's easier to, hmm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself hmm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and Good. you're stepping into the unknown, Good. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? Because your attention on those thoughts begins to re reorganize circuitry, re remold the brain. Mm. So I love this, by the way. How do you flip that to your advantage? So, so meditation is really, really means to become familiar with, correct? So we're going to talk a little bit about meditation as we go forward here in a second. But if it is true that your body is your unconscious mind, which I didn't know that, and it is true that it does not know the difference between a real event or an imagined event, can't you really use that to your advantage, though? Of course. So, because okay, yeah, so let's yeah, talk about that okay, because this is uh, because you do this really well. Mm -hmm. Because most people are waiting for their life to change. Yes. So they can feel gratitude, to feel abundance, to mm -hmm. feel whole. You know, that's the old model of cause and effect, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you're living with emptiness, you're living with lack, you're living with pain, most people have been conditioned that something out there has to take away this emptiness or feeling inside of them. But if you believe that you're creating your life and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Mm. So. So then it makes sense then that you don't really actually create wealth, you generate wealth, you oh, generate wow. abundance. So the moment you start teaching your body emotionally what that future is going to feel like before it's made manifest, well, your body is the unconscious mind, mm -hmm. believes it's living in that future in the present moment. Now, it's a scientific mm -hmm. fact that it's the environment that signals the gene, okay? Mm -hmm. The end product from an experience in the environment is an emotion. So when you begin to embrace an elevated emotion, you're beginning to signal the gene ahead of the environment. What's the importance of that? Well, genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and the function of your body. Hmm. And the expression of proteins is the expression of life. So by you creating an elevated emotion and teaching your body what that future will feel like before it's made manifest, your body's starting to live in that future reality in the present moment. Now, here's the key. If you were able to become familiar with gratitude, become familiar with wholeness, become familiar with abundance, to become familiar with freedom, mm -hmm. and you're able to generate those chemicals every single day, more than likely you would be walking around feeling like your future has already happened and you would no longer be looking for it to happen. You would already feel like it has happened. Now, what is the importance of that? Well, you're literally becoming somebody else. Yes. So you're leaving your lack. You're leaving your guilt. You're leaving your emptiness behind. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So you talk about, I want to stay in here for a minute because I know people right now are going, oh my gosh. And I'm doing that right now too. So now we get into stuff that just benefits me. One of my favorite things you say is that, and it's, it's a general thing, but I want to move into how you become this. So you say often that in order to change your personal reality, you must change your personality. But I think also the people maybe aren't aware of how that personality was formed. And we've started to go down that road, but mm -hmm. I want to keep going for a minute. Sure. And so you talk often about how a mood over time can end up turning into a personality of sorts. So yeah. could you talk about that a little bit? Sure, let's talk about it in two ways, okay? okay? So your personality, literally, Ed, is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality. And your personality is intimately connected to your personal reality, your life. Mm -hmm. So then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, 
you got to change your personality. And mm -hmm. here we go again. You got to start becoming conscious of your unconscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. You got to start noticing how you act, how you speak. You got to pay attention to how you're feeling. Some mm -hmm. people would live in guilt their whole entire life and don't even know it's guilt because at least it feels like them. So then when you start doing that, you begin to objectify your subjective self. So, so then when you begin to make small changes back to thought, yeah. a new thought should lead to a new choice. Mm. A new choice should lead to a new behavior. A new behavior should create a new experience and a new experience should create a new emotion. Yes. And that new emotion is teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. Now your mm. body is embodying the truth, right? Mm. So then the new emotion should inspire new thoughts and that's called evolution. So how do we get stuck? It's really simple. The stronger the, the emotion you feel from some event in your life, be it a betrayal or a trauma or whatever, yes. the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you pay attention to the cause outside of you. So the brain takes a snapshot. It freezes an image and embosses that pattern neurologically in the brain. That's called a memory. Mm. So we create long-term memories from strong emotional events, okay? okay? So is that true? That I just want to understand. The, maybe the larger the event in terms of its emotion to you, the stronger of a hold it has over you? Yeah, well, okay. the more it's embossed in your biology. Okay. Okay. So some certain people have a strong experience in their life, mm -hmm. and it catches all of the brain's attention. So now okay. they think neurologically within the circuits of the past experience, mm. and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. And so how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. Now here's the problem, that if you don't know how to mediate or control your emotional reaction to that event, and you keep that refractory period of chemicals going on yes. for extended periods of time, so that the event produces a chemical change, and the body needs to return back to homeostasis or balance, mm. but if it can't, then the elongation of that emotional reaction for weeks, say, for days or weeks is called a mood. So you say, Ed, what's wrong with you? I'm in a mood, why are you in a mood? Well, this thing happened to me five days ago and I'm having one long emotional reaction. So then what you do is you keep telling the story about it, keep firing and wiring the same circuits and you keep conditioning the body into the past. So then you wake up in the morning, you look for the emotion. So then now, all of a sudden you keep it lingering for, for, for weeks or months, that's called the temperament. Well, why is he so angry? I don't know, let's ask him, why are you so angry? Well, this thing happened to me eight months ago. I'm having one long emotional reaction. I'm memorizing my emotions. You keep it going on for years on end, that's called a personality trait. So then a person then is memorizing themselves by living in the past. And so then you say to him, well, well tell me the story. Now the latest research on memory says that 50% of what we talk about in our past isn't even the truth. So we make stuff up about the past. In other mm. words, people are reliving a life that they didn't even have wow. just to reaffirm that they can't change, right? Wow. So then what's the significance of this? Where you place your attention is where you place your energy, period. Yes. So then the stronger the emotion that you have to some problem or condition or person in your life, the more you're paying attention to them. So they captured your attention. So you're giving your power away wow. to that person, right? Because they're capturing your attention. Wow. So then there's an energetic connection to every person, everything, everything in your past, present reality has your energy connected to it. So now, mm -hmm. this is the significance. When a person really decides to be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memory of the past, the hardest part about it is all of a sudden becoming conscious and not making the same unconscious yes. choice. Mm -hmm. So then, if you lower the volume to your frustration, to your hatred, mm -hmm. to your anger, if you truly knew how to do that, if you lowered the volume to that emotion, you would take your attention off that person, which means you would begin to break those energetic bonds and now you're taking your power back. Yes. You're calling energy back to you and we've measured this and all of a sudden it builds this bigger electromagnetic field around the person's body. That's energy to heal. That's oh. energy to create a new future with, right? Yeah. And then if you didn't want to lower the volume to the emotion, then just take your attention off the person. And every time you take your attention off the person, if you became conscious of that, you wouldn't feel the emotion. Mm. Now the body though, has been addicted to that emotion right. because you're using that person yes. to reaffirm your addiction to hatred or frustration. Mm -hmm. And if that person died, you'd find another one. Mm -hmm. So then here you go now. So now you're in a position now where you begin to lower the volume to that emotion and the body's going, wait a second, you've been, you've been doing this for the last 20 years and all of a sudden you're just gonna stop hating? And the body says, well, 
I've been conditioned this way and conditioning is based on the past. So when the body feels the, the lack of that emotion, just like a drug addict, it says, hey, uh, you're off schedule here. So now the body starts influencing the mind to think about experiences that are embossed in the brain that are based on that emotion. So the emotion now is causing you to think in the past. If we teach a person then how to trade that frustration or that hatred for an elevated emotion and they'll say, yeah, but you know, it was my ex's fault or I got betrayed by my partner in business. Yeah, 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 we know that. Okay, so let's take your partner in business or take your ex, let's duct tape him, put him in a cannon and shoot him to the moon. Now what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you gotta reckon with yourself and change, mm -hmm. right? So then teach a person then how to trade that emotion for an elevated emotion. Now. Trade the emotion for an elevated emotion. Right. So right. you're going to give that up and you're going to practice feeling gratitude for, as an example. Yes. And the person says, well, I can't feel gratitude. And I say, I, absolutely you can because you don't practice feeling it. You practice spending most of your time feeling hatred and frustration. Mm. So now it's going to take a little time to cause that heart of, you to bloom, or, or your mm. heart of yours to bloom. Once they're able to feel even the smallest measure of gratitude, where they start feeling appreciation, thankfulness, Gratitude, it's emotional signature. When you, when you get something, mm -hmm. uh, when you're receiving something, when something has happened to you, uh, or when something is happening to you, you say thank you because you're receiving something. So the emotional signature of gratitude means the event has already happened or it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So the moment you open your heart and you feel gratitude, well, that emotion then is telling the body that the experience has already occurred. And the thought then mm -hmm. can make it into the body because it's consistent with the Whoa. thought. So now you're beginning to program the autonomic nervous system into a very specific destiny. Mm -hmm. and you got to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, mm -hmm. independent of the conditions in your outer environment. Mm -hmm independent of your body's cravings of those emotions and habituations mm. and independent from time. Mm. And if you can, get ready. Because something weird or unusual, some synchronicity, some coincidence, some mm. opportunity is gonna land in your lap and you didn't have to go and get it. Yes. It came to you. Now you're the vortex of creation. So if you say to me, well, I was feeling gratitude, but then there was traffic or my coworker sent me a, a nasty email, mm -hmm. then I would say, oh my God, you mean you're allowing your environment, right. your outer environment, to control how you feel and think, mm -hmm. you're back to the unconscious program that you're the victim to your life. You got it. But when you start producing those outcomes in your life, you're gonna pay attention to what you did inside of you and you're gonna believe more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. That is so unbelievable, the way that you, I've never heard anybody ever say it like that before because I, I've watched people who, you know, they're, this person's caused this insecurity in their life. And even when they remove the person, what they'll do is, okay, now I'm going to feel gratitude, what you just said. But they're sort of, their body is still addicted to that emotion, and they go seek other references to get them that emotion again. Yeah. So the first thing you said that I love, that I've not heard before, is one, is acknowledge when that addiction rears its head again, mm -hmm. just by acknowledging it. The second thing that really nobody talks about is, it's wonderful to meditate and to get into that space, but then you must get up and be active towards that goal. That's what most people don't ever talk about. We're changing our brain and body to live in that future present reality so that, so that you feel connected to a future instead of the past. Well, and when you're connected to the past, you're looking for it. And if you're looking for it, you're separate from it. If you're being it, then, oh my then, then there's, there's, there's a complete change in energy and nobody changes until they change their energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life. Mm. After 8,500 brain scans, I can tell you that you and I are at our absolute best when we get beyond ourselves. That is the elegant moment mm. where we're free enough to create without any encumbrances. So this has been measured too. So there's these different energy centers in the body. Is it true that if you're holding on to these other emotions, I just want a basic uh, answer for this for the group too. If you're holding on to these negative emotions and you're not moving towards this more empowering emotion. What happens to these energy centers in the body? Can you describe that to some extent? <clears throat> the majority of our thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. are connected to our sexuality, to our victimization, our guilt, our suffering, our shame, our unworthiness, our self-doubt, or our importance, our control, our fear, our anger, our frustration, our hatred, our judgment. Those are, those are the first three hormonal centers in the body. And, and those first three centers have everything to do with survival. Mm. And those centers are energy consumers. Orgasm, digestion, <sighs> stress. 
is a lot of energy that, that yes. we're drawing from our very vital life force, yes. our resource of light and information, and we're turning it into chemistry, and we're literally robbing the body's energy, right? So, so then living like that for the short term is okay, because the body can move back to homeostasis, it mm -hmm. can restore itself, but when we're overdoing that consistently, yeah. then there's no energy for growth and repair, there's, because you're living constantly in survival. So. Again, you can eat all the right food, you can do all the right things, but if you're living in anxiety and fear and you're viewing your world from the worst case scenario that could possibly happen, because that's what you do in survival, there's no energy for growth and repair. There's no energy for healing. So the majority of our thoughts are signaling certain circuits in the brain that signal another part of the brain, the limbic brain, to make what's called a neuropeptide. Mm. Neuropeptides are chemical messengers that signal hormonal centers. Mm. So now you're taking thought mm -hmm. and you're storing it as energy in these energy centers. And, and if you're living in survival, why would you open your heart? I mean, it's just not a time to open your heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're getting chased by T-Rex, mm -hmm. it's not a time to meditate. It's not a time to learn. It's not a time to connect. It's not a time to communicate. It's not a time to sit down and go within. It's not a time to be vulnerable. It's time to run, fight, or hide. And so, is that why we're this way? I've never asked you this before. Is this some? Uh, I don't. I don't think you believe this, but I just want to understand. This. Is this some sort of genetic disposition that's been passed down to us since we've been chased by T. Rex? I think so. I think survival has been very adaptive. Yeah. Like because if you're being chased by T. Rex, you don't run up to T. Rex. T-Rex and say, oh, cute little dinosaur, let me pet you. That's not adaptive. Mm -hmm. The fear is adaptive. You run from the unknown. Yes. You run from challenges, right? Yes. So if you're living in survival, there's better chances of surviving mm -hmm. if you run from the unknown. And by the way, when you're living in survival at the infinite potentials in the quantum field, mm. you'll select the worst case scenario in your mind. Mm. And you'll begin to emotionally prepare yourself for the worst case scenario because you have better chances of mm -hmm. Surviving. There you go. If you prepare for the worst, right? There you so go. people spend their whole life yes. thinking about the worst thing and emotionally embracing it. Well, you take a thought and emotion or an image and an emotion, you're branding or conditioning your body, body. into what? Anxiety. My gosh. Into fear. So then you keep doing that over and over again, over and over again. You're, the body becomes the mind of fear. And whether you think you can control it or not, you're gonna have a panic attack. Oh and the panic attack is the body saying, you've conditioned me this way, try as you may with your conscious mind right. to control it. Right. You programmed it subconsciously. Then mm. you start worrying about the next panic attack and it's that very anticipation Here we that go. keeps the person on the hamster wheel. And right? robs them of all of this energy as well. They're absolutely, so, so, so they don't believe impossibility when they're living in that state because mm. in survival it's not a time to create all the blood flow is going mm. to the hind brain and away from the forebrain there's no there's there's no physiology really for a person to begin to create a new future mm. so then so think about it so then 70% uh, of the time people in the world are living anticipating the next moment based on their past moment and so they're laying reality down moment by moment with the next known the next predictable moment so and so the hormones of stress endorse the senses our senses become heightened when we're under stress mm. and we become materialists we narrow our focus on the danger yes so then you're focusing on matter you're focusing on the material world and when you do that you put all your attention the arousal of the stress hormones puts all your attention on your body. If you're being chased by T-Rex, you better be paying attention oh to your gosh. body. When people start reaching this moment, my goodness, they're mm -hmm. overcoming themselves. And now they're at that perfect place to create. And my definition of creation is when I forget about myself. Wow. That's when you're free. So some people can do it because mm -hmm. they practice it. Other people can't get beyond the addiction of a certain emotion. That means their body is still their mind. Yes. So then if you're sitting in a meditation and your body's throwing the kitchen sink at you and saying, Ed, you're a loser. You're never going to change. This is too hard. Why don't you quit? And you're aware that that's your body doing that. And you say to your body, we're going to sit here. And we're gonna sit in this fire and I'm gonna keep applying the formula and my your brain starts running to all the emails you have to do and yes. you become aware of that and you return back to the present moment mm -hmm. and you tell the body it's no longer the mind that you're the mind. Mm -hmm. Now your will is getting greater than that program and there's a liberation of energy. Mm -hmm. And every time you do that, that's a victory. Mm -hmm. And you teach people Every time you do that, that's a victory. That's when a your victory. mind tells the body I'm in charge. When you say to your mm -hmm. when you you wanna get up and you wanna quit and you go, yeah. Oh, no, that's my body, bring it back. Okay. And now you're now you're taming the animal. The body is the animal. And you're mm -hmm. like a dog. You sit. 
Mm. And if you keep doing this, keep doing this, you're climbing on top and the body finally acquiesces. It finally says, I'm not going anywhere. And then mm. boom, there's this liberation of energy. What's the side effect? Joy. Joy. Person's heart just automatically opens up. And, and every time they do that, those victories add up. There's no such thing as a bad meditation. Mm. There's only overcoming yourself. Mm. And when you sit in the fire and you work with that, People say to me, why do you meditate every morning? I say, because if I can overcome myself in the morning, the rest of my day is Gosh, easy. Is it's that easy. Not true? Because, because that's what it's about. You master yes. yourself, you master your life. Yes. And so then all the chatter in your head that yes. you listen to all day long, that is called the default mode network in the brain. Mm -hmm. Our research shows that shuts off, not just shuts off during the meditation, mm. it stays shut off for the rest of the day. So the critic in your head that's telling you this will never happen, you don't have enough time, mm -hmm. that, there's no voice there. Mm -hmm. So you just have a clear, flow on yes. where you're going and you trust yourself more. Yes. So then when you start practicing creating that brain and heart coherence, you can believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that it's actually, <laughs> there's physical evidence in your brain to look like it's already happened. Man. And you can begin to understand, you can select a new potential in the quantum field and every day emotionally embrace that future reality oh. to such a degree that your body begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment. And you're signaling new genes and new ways to change your body to look like it's already happened. Now think about this. If there's physical evidence by thought alone in your brain and body to look like your wealth or your future yes. has already happened, it's already it happened. already happened. And you're already it. So it's not about your wealth. It's not about your health. It's not about your freedom. It's who you become. So then as you overcome, 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 you become someone else. And so most people don't understand that Oh. That the truth is, is that every time you overcome yourself a little bit more, the side effect is that you love yourself a little bit more. And so self-love is no longer about pleasure or yes. having a car. It's something that you're cultivating within you. So then imagine we have research to show, and this is such a, this is such a duality, that when you start seeing the brain start synchronizing, getting coherent. Mm -hmm. The front of the brain and the back of the brain, the two hemispheres coming together. And you, we can say to scientists that come and study our work, oh, watch this, Ed's gonna pop. What do you mean? Just watch, this is gonna be good. And all of a sudden you see this brain going into this kind of psychic union, the heart blows wide open, you see coherence going on. And you'll look around at that person and there's tears running down their mm. face. Imagine mm. feeling so whole mm. that it's impossible to want. I mean, how yeah. can you want when you're whole, because you feel like you already have it. Now, mm. when you reach that point, that's when the magic happens, because now you are worthy to receive. Yeah. And the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. receiving. Share this with them, please. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I mean, um, I'm curious and I'm a pragmatist. I mean, if you tell me something, all I want to know is how I'm going to use it in my life. And, yes. And I'm not into dinner conversation because nobody changes from that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm a doer and I want to be around doers. And, mm -hmm. and this is so, why you and I connect so well, I think. And I, yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, you, you get a group of people that are passionate about transformation and they've, mm -hmm. they've done some of the work. When we were doing our four day, four and a half day uh, advanced workshops, Right around the end of the event, I was seeing people starting to know, was seeing some really great transformations, and I thought, "This is the pop." Yeah, it's a pop. I yeah. mean, big pops. And, yeah. and we were like, we had to send them home, mm. and I was like, "Oh God, man, if I could just have them for a week." Mm -hmm. So we created these week-long events where people retreat from their lives, okay. and they remove the constant stimulation in their external environment yeah. that reminds them of who they think they are yes. as a personality. Yes. They separate themselves from the people they know and yep. the places they go and the things that they do at a certain mm -hmm. amount of time in their routine mundane life. So mm -hmm. we'll bridge a little quantum physics with a little neuroscience, mm -hmm. a little neuro ep uh, endocrinology, a little epigenetics, yep. uh, psychoneuroimmunology. Those are all sciences mm -hmm. about possibility. And I now know that if you can give people sound scientific information, and, you know, for me, that's the language. I know. And yeah. then if they can turn to the person next to them and explain it, you're not going to get off the hook. Yeah. If you can't explain it, it's not wired in your brain. Mm. But if you can build a model and explain it, you're installing the neurological hardware in your brain in preparation for the experience. So the more you understand what you're doing and why, mm. the how gets easier because you can assign meaning to it.
So then if I can set up the conditions and the environment and give them the proper instructions and push the envelope a little bit, yeah. and people who get their behaviors to match their intentions and their actions equal to their thoughts, they get their mind and body working together, they're gonna have a new experience. And the experience then is not only gonna enrich the philosophical circuits in their brain, because experience does that, but it's gonna produce an emotion. Yeah. So they're gonna start feeling more unlimited. They're mm -hmm. gonna start feeling more free. Now they're teaching their body chemically to mm -hmm. understand what their mind is intellectually understood. So if you've done it once, you should be able to do it again. You have the recipe, you have the formula. So yep. if you can repeat it, you will neurochemically condition your mind and body to begin to work as one. In other words, the body will start to learn how to do it as well as the mind, and you won't have to consciously think about it any longer. So it gets mm. easier, right? So we, we follow that format, and the first couple days is that getting beyond your life, yes. getting beyond your emotions, everybody's got to do it, but if you just keep applying the formula, keep going, I keep reminding you and keep building the model. And give, I give them numerous opportunities to connect okay. and numerous opportunities to overcome themselves. Mm. Sooner or later, you're just going to figure it out. It doesn't matter. You're just going to figure yeah. it out. And when you do, then we start seeing now these incredible transformations and changes. And it's like a four minute mile. Yeah. Because I really think now, Ed, that evidence is the loudest voice. Sure. It is the loudest voice. And yeah. so we've got all the brain scans, we've got all the heart rate m measurements, we've got great measurements on immune regulation, how you can strengthen your immune system by thought alone. We have great measurements on, on that you could actually change your genes in, in yeah. four days, you lengthen your telomeres, lengthen your life within 60 days, you know, change your neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. change the energy around your body, the energy centers of your body, mm -hmm. and change all this stuff. And so, that's the scientific evidence, but the evidence of people now is really, is really the laboratory. Mm. So then what's the side effect of a person then who begins to make significant changes in just mastering that formula? Well, the side effect is a remission from a health condition. So we have seen not once, not twice, more than twice, blind people. Mm. Like that, that one lady had a, uh, a stroke on the optic nerve, a nurse uh, mm -hmm. from, from London, very smart lady, and um, the, the um, uh, lesion was on the optic nerve and it created a blind spot yes. uh, in her visual field mm -hmm. from six o'clock to nine o'clock. So okay. she can't see right. anything there. And so she lost her license, uh, mm. she's a, she has, a, she's has her own company, uh, she couldn't read emails and sooner or later your brain accommodates a little bit but right. not fully mm -hmm. and so the typical prognosis with a stroke uh, when there's neurological damage is that if it if your brain doesn't recover within two weeks it's going to stay it's going to stay the same yep. and slowly get worse yep. so uh she has great relationships with all the physicians and they all said uh yeah you're gonna have to learn to live with it mm. and believe it or not one doctor said hey why don't you try going to this event and this nurse, nurses are practical people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're super practical people. And you want to want to get a good doctor, ask a nurse, right, right? Sure. And they're just very, very practical. So she she did all she did the online course. She did both the courses. She read all the books. She did all the meditations, and she came to the event with the intention of learning how to live with her condition. Mm. It didn't occur to her fully mm. that she could heal it, and she went because she wanted to start a nonprofit uh, to help people. Wow. So she went with a doctor that, that, uh, uh, that um, recommended uh, the work and um, just a certain point in the middle of the event she was doing a walking meditation at, on the beach uh, with a thousand other people there and, and uh, it occurred to her that maybe she should think about healing her eyes, you know. So uh, she went into uh, the meditation in the, uh, the, uh, the same day and she laid down after we finished the meditation and she said it was like someone taking cellophane, crack, pull, you know, crackling it in her head. She felt something going on inside her brain and she was crying because she knew something oh spectacular God. was happening. And she didn't want to open her eyes and then the, the, the meditation ended and she said, when I opened my eyes, it was like I was seeing so much brighter. Wow. And she said, I could see no blind spot, and she would, the doctor was laying right next to her, and she was sobbing, they were hugging oh each other. Gosh. And uh, so, so she went on the Monday morning mm -hmm. uh, to get her eyes, the visual mm -hmm. fields measured. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll get the image for you, but sure. you can see on the, the, the pre-measurement, just a black 
cor that that quarter of the sphere the lesion of the, of the circle was mm -hmm. just all black in other mm -hmm. words blindness mm -hmm. you see the post measurement on the monday morning after the event there isn't a black spot unbelievable complete restoration of uh, of mm -hmm. sight now if you ask me if that was possible mm -hmm. um you know two years ago i would say yeah it's possible theoretically mm -hmm. but now like this is the four minute mile then we have another lady that was blind from birth okay. five percent vision and uh Again, you know, she had a, an amazing experience with our coherence healing. We teach people yes. how to heal. When she opened her eyes, she could see faces for the first time. Unbelievable. And in fact, they had these two big um, bouquets on the stage, really big, beautiful flowers. And, you know, she had 5% vision, so she could just see a little bit of light. And she thought there were, they were two guards, two bodyguards mm. on the stage guarding mm. me the whole event. Mm. And when she sat up, she could see flowers. and. Or you see the nurse tell her story, or the lady who's allergic to everything at the same event, who's wearing a mask mm -hmm. with, the, with the filters and the whole bit that mm -hmm. had anaphylactic shock every day of her life. By the second day, she's on the floor with her mask off dancing around. You know, the person sits down after they witness that. When they close their eyes and they do their next meditation, their acceptance, their belief, and their ability to surrender and trust mm -hmm. that it could happen to them becomes greater. What I want our, our community to do is say, what is standing in the way mm -hmm. between me and my ability to connect to that field? Mm -hmm. Because I want to eliminate every belief, That's every emotion, every past, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I want to remove all of those veils. Why am I doing this? Because I want to get so good at this. We, we have yeah. some MIT researchers that are, gonna, that are gonna organize all the data. Mm -hmm. 50%. We want, I want to get to 50% and then we are going to walk into children's hospitals oh and we're going to gosh. say, what kids, just mm. give us your kids. Oh. We, won't, we won't touch them. We don't mm. want any money. All we want to do is help. Mm. And um, I think that is... Uh, that's amazing. That's a living organism called the human beings. That are, that, the living organism, the human being, the age of selfish individuality has to end right now. Mm. The living organism has to take care of one another. They have to heal one another. They have to teach one another. They have to exchange important information amongst one another. They have to shine for one another, not to be outstanding and competitive, but to show others that they can shine. That's, that's the only way we're gonna make our way out of this mess. Oh my gosh. My favorite things that I've ever had said here, just so you know, <laughs> because the application of this is beyond just someone going from 5% vision to 95% vision. The application of this in humanity and consciousness, as you've just described there at the end, is what really I'm, I'm hearing and seeing all of that. That's yeah. what fascinates me. And I must say to you that, you know, we all agree that certainly our thoughts can make us unhealthy. So if that is true, there's gotta be a way that the mind and the heart can be able to heal the body as well. And I'm fascinated by the study of epigenetics and uh, what you've just covered here is it's a whole new level. I love what you said, we've poked a hole, it's the four minute mile. And, but, well, I do but, but the reason it's the four minute mile is because once the four minute mile was broken, broken. two weeks later, everybody, everybody was breaking it because it was a it. new belief, it's a, a new, new level of consciousness. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so then, so the, the evidence of all these amazing healings, and not mm -hmm. only just healings, people are creating new jobs, new opportunities, That's right. That's new right. relationships, new mystical experiences yes. that transcend language where yes. you just can't be at anymore. You yes. know too much after yes. that. Yes. That's, that's the unknown, right? right? So in order for you to, to really begin to explore the unknown aspect of yourself, you gotta learn how to get beyond the known aspect of yourself. yourself. And if you keep coming back to the known, you're gonna mm -hmm. miss out on the unknown. So you would say, well, I don't know anything in the unknown. Of course, it's the unknown. And if you mm -hmm. try to control it there, you're back to the known. If you try to predict it, you're back to the known. So mm -hmm. you gotta go through this trial and error of just kind of refining your attention, Gosh. refining your ability. And, and it's just gotta be something like playing tennis or playing golf or doing martial arts or working out or crocheting or yeah. dancing the salsa. Yeah. You just got to keep going, man. Yeah. In the beginning, it's tedious. And then when you start finding your groove, like our, our community, they don't miss their morning meditations. Yeah. You know why? Because the magic is happening and they mm -hmm. know if they miss it, they're going to, they're going to, cut off from the magic. So mm -hmm. they, they, whether they're tired, whether they're hung over, whether they're, they're, right. they're in, right. you know? You know? And, and if, you, if you wake up in the morning 
and you can't get your butt out of bed. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? It just means you can predict the feeling of everything that's going to happen in your life. Yeah. And the body's resigned. The body's so resigned. Then, so then, you know, when you went on a school trip when you were a kid, you know, mm -hmm. you woke up before your parents because yes. you knew something new was going to happen. That's the yep. body going, wake up. Wake up. It's something unexpected is going to happen. What yep. happened to us? Yep. Right? Christmas so, Day. Yeah, so, yep. so why not, yeah. you know, put in your, put in your time mm -hmm. And then, and then measure the effects of you at cause. I mean, become the scientist in your life and really start to ex experiment with it. Okay, let me change my energy. Let me just write down four thoughts that, like, I can, it's too hard, I'll start mm -hmm. tomorrow, this doesn't feel right, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's be this person's fault. Just write those down and say these thoughts, yep. like Gandalf on the bridge. Yes. You may not pass today. This is the end. Yes. So then if you become conscious huh. of those thoughts, now you're the governor of your thoughts. Gosh. What 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 actions, what behaviors do you want to change? Do you complain? Do you mm. blame? Do you judge? Do you make excuses? How do you talk? Do you speak limited? Just pick four things mm -hmm. that you're not gonna do any longer. Yeah. What emotions get you in trouble? What are the emotions that you're addicted that, to too, right? That, that yep. you're addicted to that yep. keep you returning back to your past. Yeah. And if you don't know, yep. close your eyes for about 30 minutes and just watch where your mind goes and watch your feelings and just say, okay, it's frustration, mm -hmm. it's unworthiness, it's self-doubt, it's guilt, mm -hmm. it's frustration, it's shame. Just become conscious of those yeah. and just review them in your mind so that you mm. don't go unconscious them in your waking day. It's so powerful because, by the way, everyone that's listening to this, this is so awesome because if you've been listening to my content for the last three or four months, we've been laying this foundation and now I just bring you this master that takes it to a master class level and explains to you the scientific reasons that these things work. But I wanna jump back in with you here on something because I just wanna do a couple basic application things for everyone here. Um, these emotions that our body gets addicted to. There's a power, everyone, because I've experienced this in my own life. Everything that Joe's explaining here, other than healing my own body, um, I, I've, I've watched them happen in my life from the standpoint of becoming something, and then these things are in my life rather than me sort of forcing them to happen. I mean, I, I, most people that have had any great things happen in life can define at least moments of their life where this is just a known truth. Dr. Joe talks so eloquently about the fact that, you know, about th this epigenetics concept is fascinating me, but at the same time, you talk eloquently about only about 1% of us are predisposed to most of these negative ailments in our lives in the first place anyways. This is a misnomer. But I wanna talk about meditation for a second because there's people listening to this that have never done it before. So I just want them to start at a bit, because the thing that you say that it just is a base level thing, by writing these emotions down, you either don't want to experience or do, or the thoughts that do or don't serve you. The power in just that, everybody. Okay, I wanna go back to what Joe said earlier. I just wanna give you my two cents on this. Is you become aware of them when they, when they uh, reveal themselves to you. Just the awareness gives you a power over them you didn't have before. And remember what Dr. Joe said before, every time you sort of make progress on something like this, you are remaking yourself. So give yourself credit for these small wins. But the cool thing about meditation for me is it strips me of the distractions. Exactly. It strips me of what I see, of the kinesthetic, of the auditory. Can you talk about just that basic concept for again, a second? Again, I mean, this is brilliant. This is because <laughs> you're a practical guy and mm. so am I. So, mm. all right. So, if the word meditation means become familiar with, right? Yes. Then, you know, people say, oh, well, you shouldn't focus on the negative. Well, really? That's 95% mm. of who you are. And you got to begin to dismantle or denature that old personality. Mm -hmm. And that means you're going to have to come up against the cravings that the body has emotionally. You know, like if it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and you're doing your meditation. You're normally in traffic. And mm -hmm. you want to get angry. And your body's going, hey, you're off schedule. So <laughs> let me just find a, something that's mapped in the brain that I, I'll bring up a past experience why you can feel a little anger. <laughs> well, now once you become aware of that, now, now the game is on, yes, right? Yes. Because now you're working to become conscious of that and not go unconscious again. And it takes an incredible amount of awareness. Yes. It takes a great amount of consciousness and you can't have consciousness without energy. Mm. So you gotta raise your energy in order to get to it. Otherwise, you're gonna be consumed. Yes. You're gonna return back, right? So, Gosh. so if you start becoming familiar, so conscious of those unconscious thoughts, they would never slip by your mind and check by you. Now, mm -hmm. that is when you really yeah. catch yourself, right? Yeah. And the research shows that you can get better at this. You could actually sense the thought before it comes. So then you start firing and wiring new thoughts. You start thinking to yourself, who am I gonna be when I open my eyes? Mm -hmm. well, how, am I gonna, how am I gonna make a difference in the world today? Mm -hmm. Who am I gonna be? 
Mm. How am I gonna love? How am I gonna give? How am I gonna serve? How am I gonna contribute? What, are, what things do I wanna really do today? Mm. And in the, in the act of closing your eyes and just thinking about and rehearsing what you're gonna do, yes. your brain doesn't know the difference. Yes. And if you get caught up in it, you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. Done it. Now the brain's no longer a record of the past. Yeah. Now it's a map yeah. to the future. Oh, you are priming your brain, and if you mm. keep doing it, yes. the hardware will become a software program. You know what that means? Mm. You just might start acting like a happy person. Mm. Well, there's no surprise there. Mm. You install the circuits. Stress hormones arouse the body so you have your attention on your body. Stress hormones alert the brain so you're aware of everything in your environment, like mm. an octopus with tentacles and all mm. different directions. You gotta control mm. and predict everything in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're living by the hormones of stress, you're always investing your attention and energy into the known future mm. based on the past. So you're on a, you're on a, you're on a line of time here, yes. in a timeline. So then, let's think about it. Mm. How are you gonna make thought more real than anything else? How are you gonna create from thought? Well, let's close our eyes. Mm -hmm. Let's disconnect from the environment. Right. Less sensory information coming into the brain. Less yeah. distraction, as you said. Yes. Let's play some soft music in the background. Let's mm -hmm. stick some earplugs in our ear. Whatever you want to do. Diminish mm -hmm. sensory. But now you're sitting down. Yeah. You're not eating. Yeah. You're not tasting. Yes. You're not smelling. You're not feeling. Yes. So there's more, less, less sensory input coming mm. to your body. So then now mm. your brain waves begin to change. They start slowing down, and you move from this beta brainwave pattern where you're aware that you have a body in space and time or your attention is on the outer world or your senses are giving you information, mm -hmm. less sensory information, now your inner world starts becoming more real than the outer world and you're not, the voice in your head that's always talking to you, as your brain waves change, you start seeing in images and pictures and symbols and less in that vocalization, that sub-vocalization. So your brain waves start changing the alpha, you're gonna start creating, start dreaming, pretending, right? Yeah. So then, if you say to your body, you're gonna sit down for an hour, mm. and I know you're on a program because you wake up every morning and do the exact same thing, and now mm. I'm gonna make you sit, just like to say to an animal, you sit, you stay, and your body's gonna say, I'm gonna die, my bladder's gonna explode, I need a coffee, I got a lot of emails yeah. to do, that's the program. Mm. And you say to your body, today we do battle, mm -hmm. today this is it. And you sit through that and you make your way, even though your body's trying to get up and you, you keep settling it back down, I'm telling you, yep. when you start your day that day, you will be more kind, mm -hmm. more loving, less judgmental, more patient, more present, because you're mastering the present moment. That means you're not in the predictable future. You're mm -hmm. not in the familiar past, you're mastering time. And so then, if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, and all of your attention is in the present moment, you got a lot of energy to do amazing things. Oh and you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. Yeah. And you know when they're not present yes. with you because they're not paying attention to you. So, so the act of getting more present means oh. you're putting a lot of energy in the present moment and you're taking your power back from all these things and people in your life. So we teach people this. As they start breaking through and they start being able to unfold into this field as an awareness. Mm. And they're not putting their attention on their boss or their ex or their wife or their kids or their cell phone or their WhatsApp or their Facebook. They're, 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 they're not thinking at all. Mm. So then, as they're sensing the space, they can't think. And if you can't think, you can't analyze. And if you can't analyze, the analytical mind is what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious, which just open the door. Wow. And so now, wow. you can reprogram in there, wow. right? So then, it's so important then that of the infinite places you can put your attention, let's put it on your heart. Now, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Why? Because we want this center to bloom. Mm. 1,400, 1,300 different chemicals that restore and regenerate the body. Let's breathe, let's open this up, let's practice this. Let's start learn how to lead with our heart, a different consciousness. Yeah, in the beginning, it's a little difficult, but mm. you stay with it and you practice it, Pedal by pedal by pedal, you're placing your attention there, you're putting your own life force oh back into your heart. You're turning your love inward, oh and the body will start responding. Mm. And in a week's time, if we're doing that three times a day or over and over again, <laughs> sooner or later, that thing's going to start blooming. And just like when your sexual organs are aroused and they're mm. engorged with blood, mm. this center, when you start feeling love, you make a chemical called oxytocin. Yep. Oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Mm. 
Nitric oxide sig signals a chemical called derived endothelial relaxing factor. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. It causes the arteries in your heart to literally open up. Mm -hmm. So your heart is going to be filled with blood and oxygen and nutrients. It's physiological. It's going to feel full. Now, you're going to have a heart on, in a what? sense. <laughs> your heart is going to fill, right? And when that happens, you experience a level of love that passes all understanding. You, your cup runneth over. I mean, it is, Ugh. and people are in, they're sobbing because they realize that this, this center finally, like a child, so then back to your, your question, yeah. let's demystify meditation yeah. because it has so many stigmas it around it. Close your eyes, retreat from your life, mm. disconnect from your body, disconnect from your environment, disconnect from your schedule yeah. and just give yourself an hour or 45 minutes mm. or 20 minutes yeah. because when you invest in yourself, you invest in your future. Yeah. And when you believe in yourself, you believe in possibilities. Mm. And when you believe in possibilities, you believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in possibilities, then you don't, don't believe in yourself. yourself. And you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in possibilities. Oh so then, gosh. but if you have a community, a living organism, yeah. where it's becoming the new normal, yes. and you wanna join that living organism, and you wanna, you wanna be a part of that, and, and every, every stride you make feeds the living organism. Every stride, every effort you make, uh, to connect is, is amazing because that which we are seeking is seeking us. Mm. It's not like, mm. <laughs> it, it is, it, it matches our efforts. Mm. And so then when, when people have that uncompromising will, mm. the same way that they go shopping for a dress or a pair, pair of earrings or go to the gym and work out, with the same intensity, with the same passion, mm. come up against themselves and just say, when the body's going, given everything it has, it's when you say, that's all you got? Wow. That's it? That's all you're going to put out to? Wow. I'm ready. Wow. And so then, when you start overcoming that, yeah. the side effect of it is that all of a sudden you're happy for no reason. Mm. And you're less seduced in believing that something outside, you need something outside of it, outside of you, to make you feel better. Mm. All of a sudden, you're feeling better every day without mm. anything outside of you. And now all of a sudden you start showing up unpredictable in your life. They're saying, that Ed guy, he's different. He's, different. he's on a different medication. He's, he's <laughs> something's going on. With but in actuality, yeah. you're just freer, right? Oh and so, so then as we begin to remove these layers that yeah. stop the, the flow of the divine in us, that, that in essence in us, the side effect is we become more willful, mm. we become more mindful, become more conscious, we become more loving. It's its, it's nature, you know? Yes. It just, it just it comes, becomes who we are. I love how you explain things that everyone that's listening to this has had flickers and little moments in their life of this. And there's been a moment or two where you've had that red tie experience. There's been that moment or two where you felt bliss or energy. And now Dr. Joe's beginning to give you the formula and the recipe to do that all the time, to be that per to become that person. So I got one more question for you and then I want them to get access to you because that's what they all want. Um, I have 3,000 more questions for you, <laughs> but in the interest of respecting your time, um, we've talked a lot about, and I, I just people, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this because I know people say, I wish you would have asked him this because the first time I didn't ask you this. You talk a lot about becoming that child again. And I think there's a lot of parents listening to this. Mm -hmm. And so I've read a little bit about your work about children from zero to six are sort of in theta state most of the mm -hmm. time and then alpha from like mm -hmm. eight to 12. But if I were a parent, how does Dr. Joe's work apply and how can I implement it as a parent so that perhaps my child doesn't have all of these negative emotions sure. that their body is addicted to by sure. the time they find themselves at yeah. 35 years old running the software yeah. program of their life. So yeah. how, would I, how would I help my children? So I have three kids and yeah. I've raised my kids with these principles. And, mm. and I think uh, there are critical periods, Ed, where certain information uh, is more understood in mm. uh, certain periods where uh, you, can, you can really advance uh, a teaching or an understanding. 
But the children, you know, the first six years of their life, they're very suggestible to information. And their brain waves are just in a slower pattern, so mm. they don't have any critical facilities or analytical facilities. So big boys don't cry. Little girls should be seen and not heard. Money is the root of all evil. God mm. is mad at you. You're going to mm. go to hell. Mm. So kids just take that all in without any filter, and that becomes the foundation of their personality and our identity. Then you throw in parents that are 95% of the time running unconscious programs. Well, children have mirror neurons, and mirror neurons emulate behavior. So mm. when you were feeding your kids when they were young, you took that spoon and you went like this. <laughs> you didn't know you were doing that, but you were doing that and they were watching you and you were watching them and they were, they were wow. turning on the same circuits in their brain that you were turning on just so they could model the behavior. So, so then you can't say to the kid, stop being an emotional basket case <laughs> because they're not listening to anything you're saying. They're, they're observing behavior. They're modeling. So when a lioness takes her cubs out to hunt, they sit and they watch her. And they're, when they're watching her, she's priming their brain. They're actually going to emulate her behavior. So as they start observing her, they, they start turning on the same circuits they will when they hunt. So they start imprinting it, right? Mm. So then with children then, I call it the fast path to enlightenment. Because if you want to raise a great kid, you got to be the example. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there's certain principles with children uh, in certain critical periods. You don't tell your kids when they're four years old, you create your reality, fix this, you know. It's not, they're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things at certain periods of time that are really healthy. And, and teaching children how to shorten the refractory period yep. of their emotional reactions mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. And simple things like a trampoline okay. is a great way when a kid is upset, just change their state. Let's go. Yeah, okay. let's go. Okay. And they jump and you jump with them 10 mm -hmm. minutes later, it's gone. Isn't that true? And yeah. so then you're, you're teaching them that kind of emotional intelligence. Gotcha. Parents need to know that it's so important to understand to never rationalize with your kid when they're emotional. Why? Because do you want to hear anything when you're emotional and you want to be left alone? Because no new information can enter their nervous system that is not equal to the emotion that they're experiencing. Wow. It's not relevant. Wow. So then getting them past their emotional state and teaching them how to shorten their refractory period and then timing. Okay. When they start getting ready for bed and it's getting loving and it's getting quiet and they're settling mm -hmm. down, you get in bed with them and you lay there and you say, mm -hmm. you know, I had a tough day today. Mm -hmm. I just, I've been working on my frustration, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't do very well today. I mm -hmm. just, I got angry at a few points, I got frustrated, and I stayed that way for like three hours. And you just open the door for kids mm -hmm. and they'll say, yeah, you know, I was playing today. And they'll, they'll automatically say, and I got so frustrated with my friend Paris, you know. Mm. And I'll say, well, that's all right, you know. That's normal. We all do that. But what I care about the most is that if you had another opportunity tomorrow mm. in the same situation, how would you do it better? Oh my God. And then they'll say, well, I would do this. And then you say, really, if you do that, this is probably going to happen. So let's work on this together. Mm. So you start building a model. Oh and you help them because they're so neuroplastic. Mm -hmm. And then once you get that model in place, then you say to them, tell me how to do it again. What would you do? Mm -hmm. Now what are they doing? Mm -hmm. They're rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And so now they're installing the circuitry. <laughs> and then you say, wait, one more time, one more time, because mm -hmm. you forgot that one part. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised because they're in that right suggestible state. And mm -hmm. then you get the model down and then you say, okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. There were these two kids, a boy and a girl. Because you have a boy and a girl, right? Mm -hmm. And they live in this magic land, and they, if they're young, there's mm -hmm. castles, and, and there's dragons, and this little girl had a best friend, you know, and you tell the mm -hmm. whole story, and she was making this reaction the same time in the same way, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, she just decided to do something differently, and then you repeat it. Mm -hmm. And then you say, we know what happened? She wound up being happier, and more loving to herself, and more mm -hmm. loving with everybody else. And then, you know, your kids will go, was that me? And you say, I don't know, was it? <laughs> so then you're planting the seed. Being in your company and listening to you again today, I'm just, I'm just so grateful for you. Oh, thank you. I'm so blown away by you. You're such an extraordinary man. And um, I know everybody listening to this or watching it has the same sense I do. We're just so grateful you exist. Hmm. And um, 
I just, I love you. So, um, hmm. but I want people to get closer to you. It's called Becoming Supernatural and it's been out for a few years. It's just mm -hmm. going paperback now okay. uh, in March. And, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the science uh, behind what I'm talking about is in Becoming Supernatural. Uh, and, and it's a good, uh, with every chapter in that book, there's exercises and meditations and examples of people who have okay. done it. So it's got a lot of science and a lot of content, but I, I made it simple enough. Uh, and I talk a lot about the mystical too, which is one of my passions. You guys all need to plug in here. You all got to get access. And the other places to go to Dr. Joe's Instagram or Twitter as well, his social media, he's really starting to engage in and the following is flourishing. And then after this, it's going to grow even more. And so you can connect with him there as well. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say to you. It was so incredible today. So I'm just, I'm just grateful. Hey, listen, and, I, I wanted to just say thank you for all the great work you do too. And just you. your energy and your humility and your <laughs> interest you. and, and you're a practical guy like me. And, yeah. uh, hopefully we're making a difference in the world. I know you are. And I'm glad to be a little we part are. of it today. So I love thank you, brother. You. Thank love you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I know you enjoyed today's program, and I know right now you're all going, I need to go listen to this, I need to share this with somebody. I don't even have to ask you to today. I know you're going to share this, the people that you love, that you care about, that you want to see win and become happier, and the best version of themselves finally step into that place where they're really at bliss, really living to their ultimate capacity and potential. And so I know you'll share it with everybody. I want to remind you, though, to engage with me every day on social media. On Instagram, I run the max out two minute drill every single day so that I can connect with you more. That's the purpose of doing it. That's why the community has exploded. What that means is every day when I make a post in my main feed on Instagram, every single day on the first two minutes, if you just make a comment with a hashtag max out in it, you're enrolled in a drawing. Every single day I pick a winner. They get access to things like my book, access to coaching calls with me, sometimes my guests, max out gear, all kinds of incredible things. And we pick someone every single day that I connect with. And then if you miss the first two minutes because your notifications weren't on, so turn those on, but if you miss that, just make a comment every day on my posts. You know, I make one, one a day. At the end of the week, we add up everybody who just commented every day, regardless of the time, we pick a winner from there as well so that I can connect with you. Please share this. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see this. If you're watching on YouTube, get the audio version because content is different on both platforms. God bless you and Max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, Hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week, and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.